Thank you for joining us on our Family First Life Tri-State Serve the People podcast. We appreciate you tuning in, spending your time to develop and grow with us. Follow us, please, on all our social media platforms at Family First Life Tri-State or FFL Tri-State. We love you. Keep listening. And I hope this information is serving you across the country. All right, everybody. Thank you for jumping on with us for our Family First Life Tri-State Training Day podcast. I got my man, John Gavin, board member of FFL North, newly minted integrity partner, excited about his video, his announcement. We had to get him on here because they got so much momentum, so many great things happening. And John, correct me if I'm wrong, but when your video came out, tell me that didn't just send shockwaves through your agency. It absolutely in, in so many different ways too. you know, um, it, it is a, a thousand percent a team effort and it's something that we all celebrated in because one of the things I learned early on in this business and even just as an agent, because when I first came in, you know, I, I didn't plan on building an agency. I just wanted to sell insurance, mm. but you don't do that on your own. Right. You, you learn from other people. Right. And then when you, you know, you learn from as many people as you can. And then as the business progresses and you do start building an actual business, you know, you're still learning from other people, but you're doing it together with the, the agents that you bring on and helping them build agencies. And, it, and the whole thing ended up with where it did and the greatest place ever with Integrity Marketing Group and, you know, a thousand percent of team effort. I'm just so thankful for the people I get to work with every day. Yeah, man, just amazing stuff. I mean, let's talk about your journey a little bit. We've covered it before, but, you know, Integrity does a great job of, of of rehashing the past to explain to the audience how people got there. And I would love to recover some of that. Like, I remember you starting, and I mean like week two of Family First Life, I get an email, we get this uh, this, this email about a guy named John Gavin who goes out there and is making it happen for his daughters. Talk to us a little bit about the journey, where you were at when we started the company, because you're, you're a day one dude. And yeah. kind of what transpired to get you kind of focused on this thing the way, you know, you made you made it happen through the years. Sure. And and the, the funny part about that is and I have been here since day one, but nobody knows who I am. And, <laughs> and it's, it's because there's a, there's a few reasons for that. Though. You know, it's like I, I was talking to Paul McLean the other day. And I was on a flight and I was watching the movie Braveheart, you know, and I was thinking, you know, Braveheart, Mel Gibson and the big battles they had going on. And and if you think of how FFL started, it was similar to that because everyone wanted to see us fail. It was a battle to succeed. And and if you look at Sean being Mel Gibson and leading that battle, Mm -hmm. well, the guys in the front row were like you and Matt Smith and Paul McClain and Killiman and Andrew Taylor. Like you guys were at the forefront. You guys had the big swords. You guys were leading everybody else. I was in the ninth row in the back with a stick. Like I was in the battle. Like I was there, but I wanted to like, you guys just take a couple steps ahead and take on the brunt of it because you guys are the ones that got sued. You guys are the ones that had the depositions. You guys want to have all the legal fees and everything like that. I just came along behind you and said, we good here? You know, we good. So you laid down the first couple of rows and made it a lot easier for us to come in. You know? So boy, was it I was here from the beginning. And, uh, you know, prior to, to FFL, you know, I, I, like you, I had uh, some time in the mortgage business and, and I did pretty well there. You know, I, I, I made good money, never worried about it. I had nice cars, nice house, nice boat, nice life and everything, but I didn't know anything about business. Mm. You know, I didn't know about, you know, compounded interest. I didn't know about, you know, credit card debt, living on debt, that sort of thing. And so, so I made, you know, this much, but I'd live like I made a little bit more all the time. And I didn't know any better, you know, and I could just make more money and pay my bills. And so when the housing market crashed, it hit me really hard. Like I lost everything quick. Wow. You know, it was, it was a fire sale, you know, first, you know, the, the cars go, then the boat goes and the furniture goes and the house goes, you know, and, you know we can, we can rent this it was big a fire house. Sale for, quick. <laughs> we could rent this big house. Cause things aren't going to get that bad. Like, Hey, this house is too big. We need a smaller house, smaller house, smaller house. Mm. And eventually after, you know, the, the wife at the time couldn't take too much of that. I ended up alone in a garage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I need to make some changes here, you know, and I was renting the garage out and, 
you know, it, it yeah. had a kitchenette and a bed in there. So it wasn't just, uh, it wasn't the like oil <laughs> racks or anything like that. But so um, I looked for a job for a couple of years and, and nobody would hire me. You know, I, I, it was the worst job market we ever had. And, and our industry is what caused it. So right. nobody wanted to hire us and try some consulting work. And eventually I came across an ad for working for an insurance company. Mm. So I got my license there, worked for a, a captive company for a year. And that just wasn't my thing. Um, and I was going back into the mortgage business when somebody there asked me if I was looking to make some extra money. And, and I said, sure, because I needed some money at the time, you know, and, and that was with another company and um, was there for about a year. And, and it was really rough because we had low comp. We had to pay for training. We had to pay for every, every time you turned around, you had to pay for something. <laughs> and I went in broke. And I, after a year, I was even more broke. <laughs> so it cost me money to work there for a year. And <laughs> This is great. It's back. And so, you know, they, they tell you, oh, this is only $100 a month. But they hit you every Friday. So instead of having one overdraft, I got four this month on that, you know? And so it just, it was it was rough. And, and I was about to leave the business. I was going to go do something else, anything else, you know? And um, I applied for jobs like a milkman, a dating coach. I mean, whatever I could. And nobody would still, nobody would hire me. But I was talking to Matt and Matt Smith and Sean Ruggiero and, and uh, they said, hey, you know, don't quit yet. This is about to change, you know. And, and that's when Sean Mike came out and met with us and said, you know, all everyone in the insurance business has been taking advantage for too long. And we're about to change that. Wow. And I don't know what this is going to look like. Um, but I can guarantee you one thing that I will outwork every president of every IMO out there to make sure that you guys are in the best position to succeed. Wow. Um, I believed in him. You know, I had faith in him. I had faith in Matt. I had faith in Sean. Hmm. And I had no other options. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, All right, makes let's sense. Go. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> you know? um, so, you know, you guys are the ones that led that battle. And I just came through. And like you, like you said, in the first few weeks, um, I, I made some, some really good money. And I was able to move from one side of the state out of the garage to go be with my kids. That's and, awesome. and that meant the world to me. That's when everything changed. Hmm. You know, what was that conversation like? I mean, Sean, you know, documents that conversation every so often. I heard it early. Yeah. Haven't heard it in a while. And I heard snippets of it in your release video. But what was that conversation like from Sean Mike saying, dude, what are you doing? Well, all the way this far away. Like, can you detail? And then what motivated yeah. you to make those changes? So, you know, there, there's a few things. It's, it's I was four and a half hours away. And that's on a sunny day. There was a big mountain range in between us. Mm -hmm. So if the, if it snowed and, and the pass was closed, I wouldn't see my kids for a month. Mm -hmm. um, and they were two and four at the time. And so when you're two, a month can go by and I saw the change in them. I'm like, Oh dear God, you know, she got bigger without me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want my kids to grow up without me, you know? And so that was, I would do anything to get closer to them. And so when Sean started this up, you know, there's a few things it's like, yeah, we don't know what it's going to look like, but you're going to have to work. And, and, and I was able to put everything else aside to work to make sure that I could be close to them. And, and <clears throat> when you do that, when you look at what the end result, what you want to be, and you're willing to avoid everything that could possibly derail you from getting there, you give up everything else. Mm -hmm. I completely gave up my social life. I completely gave up everything that I did that was not work related or kid related. When I was mm -hmm. with my kids, I was present with my kids. When I was not, I was doing something that was work related. We didn't have leads at the time. So I went to work in my warm market, trying to sell insurance to friends, family, that sort of thing, until we worked the lead system out. Mm. And I was able to do that. And so everything I did was work related or with my kids until I didn't have to anymore. Yeah, well. But then once you start doing stuff like that, then you realize that, you know, watching other people play sports is not beneficial to your own life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, was, I was able to do that. You know, I was able to give that part up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's great, so, dude. <laughs> and I think, I think having that faith in other people was instrumental for me because, um, you know, you don't get to 40 and broke by making good decisions. Mm. You know, some things happen. Yeah. But they happen to a lot of other people. They didn't hit them as hard as they hit me. They hit me because I made bad decisions. Right. And I finally had to take ownership of that because I never had. 
I always thought that these things happened to me and I had no control over them. And that's what derailed me. But if I looked at every single situation that put me in a bad spot, it started with a bad decision on my part. Mm. And when I was able to take control over that and ownership of it, acknowledge that, then I realized I had more control over things moving forward. Strong. And, and so knowing that I make bad decisions, how do I create a better life for me and my kids? Mm. It starts with making better ones. And I need to surround myself with people that make better decisions. Like the one thing I love, one, I mean, I love so much about this company, this industry, um, and the people we get to work with is we're surrounded by some pretty sharp dudes that make good decisions. Now, mm. they may not make all great decisions, right. but for the most part, they do. When I was in the Morris business, you know, we made horrible decisions together and we made worse <laughs> ones collectively. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so now I, you know, knowing that I don't make the best decisions in the world, I started reaching out. Hey, Matt, what would you do here? Hey, Sean, what would you do here? Hey, Sean, what would you do? And, and so I started to get their train of thought down to where I, I didn't have to ask them everything forever, but it just kind of retrained my brain, my, my, my thought process into making better decisions. Just fantastic. You know, I, please, if you're listening, you know, you, 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 I don't really need you to go further here because all you have to do is replace yourself with John's word tracks and start making better decisions and getting around people that make better decisions. I mean, I, I love the way you say that, man. And I don't know if I look if I've looked at it that way. But that's basically what I did too, right? Like yeah. surrounding myself with people that were doing the things I wanted to do and asking them questions when I didn't know the answer, which, mm -hmm. you know, sped up the curve, which helped, you know, lay down tracks a lot faster to run. And, you know, but your journey, I mean, from that to, again, <laughs> this was... <laughs> was still a process right oh yeah for sure <laughs> so keep keep walking us through so you know once i once i kind of leveled myself off and i started making consistent money you know i kind of got into a place that i look back now and i didn't realize it but it was a dangerous place um it was a, a world of being unbroke so Ooh. i wasn't broke anymore mm. but i was comfortable being unbroke and what that means is that I could pay my bills. I didn't have the stress of, of not be able to afford things or pay for things or get the collection calls that I had before. But if something went wrong, I was back there again, hmm. you know? So I, I lived comfortably unbroke for a little bit. And that's when I wasn't building a business, wasn't building an agency, wasn't the number, number you know, the top producer in the company. I didn't push myself as much as I, I should have at the time. And I didn't realize how what a dangerous place that was. I'm fortunate that nothing happened or I didn't make any bad decisions to derail that whole thing. Right. But there's a lot more I could have done at that time. Mm. And um, eventually had a conversation with with Matt and, and you know, he flat out said to me, he goes, how does it feel to be the biggest underachiever in the company? Ooh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What year was that? What year was that? That was about four years ago. Wow. You know, about four about four years ago, you know. How did you take um, that? You know, um, I knew that the intent was coming from a good place. Wow. And I knew that, that here's the thing is I knew where I was. I knew what I was doing. And end of the year, you know, Sean gives out awards. He gives, you know, a watch or a ring. And I didn't feel good enough with what I did for that year. So I called him up and said, dude, I don't don't spend your money on me. I could have done more. You know, and he's like, I got to give you something. So for two years, I got an empty box. I'm like, I don't want you to spend a dime on me because I didn't do enough. Mm. And if that happens two years in a row, it's like, come on, man, what are you going to do? Wow. And so I I decided to um, to really fill my schedule up, um, not just live unbroke, to actually build an agency to sell as much as I possibly could. Um, and the year that I started building the agency is is when I had my biggest production year. I mean, it's nothing compared to what the numbers are put up now, um, but I had this, the biggest production year that I had, and that's when I started building the agency. Well, hold um, on, real and that's quick. when hold, a lot hold, hold yeah. that thought because there's a big thing that just happened that doesn't happen that often in this day and time. Is you know how does it feel to be the biggest underachiever in the company? The amount of offense that people take today. Guy is unbelievable. I mean, the yeah. fact that you dug in and didn't go, 
I hate Matt for the rest of my, he's out of my life for it, which yeah. I can't even tell you how many people think that that's a good move now, as yeah. opposed to understanding he's your friend, he loves you, he's trying to help you, he's actually trying to use some sort of reverse psychology to help you and your family yeah. go to another level. You internalize it and start making different decisions. I just had to pause for a second because obviously you're living in the same world I live in, you yeah. know, with the amount of, <laughs> you know, offense that people Ugh. take to stuff like that. You know, what are your thoughts on that? You know, it, had I not gone through what I did, I probably would have taken it differently. You know, losing everything really humbled me um, and it changed my mind. It's the best. Losing everything is the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, because it, it changed me in so many different ways. It made me realize that, you know, the materialistic things of the world meant nothing. Um, it's all about family. Um, I don't know it all. I screwed it all up and that I'm willing to break everything down to be as humble as I can and take any advice I can from anyone that's in a better spot than me and learn from it. And I don't take things personally. Um, and I knew that was coming from a good spot. So that's how I took it. That's that's machine like thinking. Again, I'll take a, take your notes, take your pen out, take these notes, man. It's gonna help you. I promise you. If someone cares about you and they need to be direct with you, and you need to be able to handle the fact that they're being direct because they care, because they care, because they care. So keep going, my brother. Yeah. So um, I wanted to give people uh, when I started the building process and the hiring process. I didn't want people to, if I thought about it, if I was coming to an agency and learning from somebody, would I want to be taught by a little bit higher than mediocre producer? No, I wouldn't. So where do I have to go? So I had to produce at the highest level I possibly could while hiring um, and recruiting. Um, I had my first um, really, really, really big month. And um and then I attracted two of the right people right afterwards because of that. Nice. And and they're the biggest parts of my business now, you know. And um, and I learned a couple of lessons along the way, and and in in the recruiting process, and and that kind of laid the groundwork down. And and so as you're building an agency and you're trying to help people grow with you, you know, there's a lot of growing that takes place even after that. You know, you have personality conflicts with people. Um, you've got more ownership and more accountability than you ever had before. Being accountable, being accountable as an individual is one thing, but when you have a business, you're accountable for everything that happens under that umbrella, regardless of whether you had any impact or not. It's mm. still your responsibility. No doubt. And so that gave me a new level of responsibility and and dealing with the different types of people. You know, I learned a lot, <laughs> and and there's some battles I had with some people that you know it was again, you had to set your ego aside and, and, you know, I'll be honest, sometimes I wasn't good at it. And, and now I've learned because a lot of times when, when there's a, a battle of egos, there's a lot of fear involved on one side of it. Wow. And, and once I learned that, um, I realized to let my guard down and not put up that fight like I'd want to, because if I wasn't fearful, that meant the other person was, Oof. and and why are they? And so, I've just learned how to connect and coach people in a different way than I ever knew possible. Dude, I'm taking notes right now. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to soak it all in. Um, just great stuff. I mean, but there became a point in time where you decided, you know, what the heck? I'm going to, you know, we're going to bring these people in. We're going to nurture them. We're going to train them. We're going to help them grow. You know, integrity came on the scene two and a half years ago. Yeah, we didn't. I don't know if you had heard of them at, at that point. I had. Yeah. I had not. You yeah. know, what was your thoughts when you initially heard that? You know, integrity was a player in this space. So it was. I felt I was comfortable and I felt really good because I felt it was a good thing for the company itself. Mm. Because having that big brother um, to align ourselves with just gave us that much more credibility. Mm -hmm. I knew by the time that I'd found out about him, there was, you know, several people that were, you know, outside of Sean um, that were already in the works of getting deals done with them. Mm. Me getting a deal done seemed so far away, <laughs> not even a possibility. I was like, I was on the side of going, bravo, good for you guys. That was awesome. Your family's taken care of. <laughs> you know? 
And, <laughs> and I was happy for you guys. You deserved it, you know, because you guys were the pioneers that laid this whole thing out. You know, I really felt like you guys deserved it. And and it was always something nice to work towards. But I didn't really think that I didn't really think that I'd achieve it and get mm. there, you know. And, um, you know, so when more and more deals started getting done, um, I just kind of want to see where I was at. You know, so what do I need to do? So um, I flew to Boca and I said to Sean, I said, here's my business laid out. We know that integrity is a possibility for some of the people here. What do I need to do to not just put myself in that position wow. or in the ring, but what do I need to improve as a business? And if it ends up there, then it ends up there. And so we went through some things and, and he said, do this, this, boom, boom, boom. And as soon as I got home, I did this, boom, 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 handle it all. And and next thing you know, within six months, I got a call from, from Stephen Prince and said, hey, let's talk, you know, and wow. we got in the initial stages there. Um, I do want to touch on this because I don't want to let this go by any means whatsoever. It's like there's so many mentors that helped me out along the way. But the biggest catalyst to me being in this position was having the right staff. Mm. Um, before I hired people that I liked, I hired people that made me feel good. Mm. I hired people that laughed at my jokes. I, I hired people that told me I was smart. Mm. They just didn't work. And so things weren't getting done. And then, <laughs> you know, um, I was fortunate enough to have somebody that I hired part-time to do some bookkeeping for me. And that bookkeeping role, it kept expanding and expanding. And she saw some things in the office that that she pointed out to me. And and then so we kind of partnered up and she took over the office. And, and then the whole atmosphere changed from, from hiring people that made me feel good to hiring people that could do a job. Mm-hmm. And and we went, you know, we went through some people that couldn't, you know, but seeing that difference and getting the work done and knowing that this is actually a business, not a friendship. I love my staff. They're great people. But this is business. Mm-hmm. And so when when I decided to to get a lot more serious about the people that I paid to work with me, um, things changed then. And I found people that were good at all the things that I'm not good at, mm-hmm. all the tedious stuff, all the admin stuff. I'm terrible at those sort of things. But when you find staff, they're the ones that should, that should be good at that. No doubt. And when you when you have you know the sales aspect, the people aspect, and they can support the business aspect, that's mm-hmm. when we really started to grow. That's amazing. And what did that look like as far as, you know, positions and, you know, let's see how I want to phrase this. You know, you actually had to, you know, how'd you, I guess, choreograph or architect what you were looking to bring in to support the business? So the the first thing I did was ask a lot of questions. Ask people, who do you have? What do you have them do? You know, um, and the first person that we always hired was a recruiter, you know, and, and then, you know, what is their job? Do they do this? Well, then we have a lot of business stuff that I'm not good at. So the, the office manager does all the licensing, the contracting, the, all the contracts, the leases, the, the HCM at all the mm-hmm. business side of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got a really good hiring manager that does the recruiting. Uh, we've got an office manager that does all the office admin and kind of runs the entire office herself. Um, and then eventually when we went away from some of the, you know, third party hiring things that weren't working very well to social media, and now we've got a social media person that handles all that. Um, and, you know, one of the great things about, you know, Sean's mentorship is, is having, you know, staff meetings where since I don't do those things, I don't run the staff meetings. Mm. So they run the staff meetings and mm. they work together. So you know, recruiting impacts contracting, contracting impacts leads, and they all intertwine. So having those three girls work together Mm. um, to to help and change any process that we need or increase something, um, they have more ownership of it. And now with integrity, they legitimately have ownership Uh, of uh, it. I love it. Yeah. Man, dude. Yeah, listen, I I appreciate you very much, you know, just from your transparency, your ability to, shed light on holes that you had to patch up little by little, slowly but surely to get to a position. Um, even you flying in the Boca saying, dude, here it is. I don't know if this is possible for me, but I don't want to be a burden to my team. I mm-hmm. want them to be able to see this. 
what do I need to do? And dude, go home, bang, bang, bang. I did it. Like, do you know how refreshing? Like, I'm listening to it like it's a hot summer day and I just had a bottle of Gatorade. Not, not because it's like, <laughs> that's why you're here though, dude. Like, you know, like yeah. you, you put your ego way in the back. You supported, served your team. And it paid big dividends for you and your team, you know. So congratulations, man, on 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 all your success. You know, everybody's journey is different, yeah. but you know what I've figured out is when they call your number, bro, they call your number. <laughs> <laughs> they say you do. know what I'm saying. They like do. once they call your number, it's called for life. So, yeah. man, I cannot be more um, happy for you. Proud of you and your company, your business, your, what you're doing for your family, your 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 uh, your team, your staff. You know, if and I, I don't, I hate to end with a parting shot because I feel like there's so much more in the tank here. Um, but well, I'm gonna ask you a question before I ask for a parting shot. With sure. integrity stepping in and helping you from you know from where you are, and I know you're onboarding and getting acclimated. Yeah. You know, what are some things that you're anticipating? Well, what are some things that you're already feeling that's helping you grow your agency faster? I, I think that, you know, they're all about the people and culture and every aspect and every department we've talked to have literally like the greatest people I've ever worked with. Mm. And I think that this whole process, this whole deal, my whole journey would be a complete failure if I didn't bring as many people here as I possibly can. When, when we get to experience this, the first thing I did was, you know, we're fine. This is great. Our staff loves it. How many more people can we get here? Amen. Because I think everybody deserves to, to feel this, experience this, and take care of their family and be part of the Integrity family. That's amazing. And uh, I agree with that. If you can give us a parting shot. So there's an agent out there who's just getting started or there's a manager who's struggling, who's trying to put this thing together. What would you give them? as a word of advice well put aside your ego because ego is what got me broke okay so. listen to others that are more successful than you you know when when i came here i was 42 years old and i was taking advice from 24 year olds mm. and it was great advice too so it doesn't matter who it is if you find people that are that are that are doing the things that you want to do listen to them wow Put aside your your natural instincts because if it's not working for you, your natural instincts are not working. Listen to those that are. <laughs> I can't. Mars laugh. I want that to be my ringtone. <laughs> it's crazy, and it's facts, uh, man, dude. I love your delivery. It's easy to listen to, easy to understand. I'm I'm a hundred percent sure. Many people are going to grow listen to this. I'd rewind this thing, man, because I think this is a great story of um, being at wit's end, making change, like in a garage, <laughs> you, the way you say it. <laughs> I was married. We went from house to house to house. I was alone in a garage, <laughs> alone in a garage to Integrity Partnership, man. So congratulations to you, all you do. Thank and you. Um, thank you for... For, I'm so glad we've been in business since day one together, and it's Did an you honor. and, and this, the people that are working with you now. They have to understand that you are the one that paved the road. You were the one that set the work ethic for everybody. You're the one that got it remoted to get up and do the things that they didn't want to do. So everyone that's in your group is so fortunate to be there because you're the one that paved the road and continue to do so. So I'm thankful for everything you got for me. I think you're instrumental in my growth and my learning and, and everything in the beginning because I never want to let anybody down and, and you set the tone for work ethic. Yeah, man. I was just following Sean. You know, it was yeah. kinda of, it was easy. I was hungry, but it was it was he just gave a, such a great path. But I appreciate those words, man, and I appreciate you more than you know. Let's make it a big week, guys. Great podcast. Rewind, please. God bless. Yeah.